What's up ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to take a look at the story of John Henry, the steel driving man. If you've ever heard a tall tale and thought there has to be some truth in there somewhere, there has to be some real history there, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. That's what we do here. We take a look at West Virginia folklore and ghost stories and try to find the who, the what, the when, the where, the how, and give some historical context to those stories. Uh, we also do some West Virginia history and travel videos, so uh, yeah, you're probably going to like what we do here. Today we are going to talk about John Henry, the steel driving man, the history that inspired it, and uh, why it is still a relevant story to this day. So the most common telling of the story of John Henry is the account that was recorded by one S.E. Schlosser. Uh, in this account, Henry was born a slave in the South in the 1840s and was freed shortly after the American Civil War. He soon went to work on the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. John was known for being one of the largest and strongest men on his work crew, along with one of the hardest workers. He spent his day hammering steel spikes into rocks so that dynamite charges could be placed in the holes in order to clear way for the railroad tracks. That was until the workers made it to Big Bend Mountain. This is really the first place we we're going to run into some different variants of the stories. In some stories, it was because of time restraints. They had a deadline they had to meet uh, for when this railroad had to be done. In other stories, it was more of a budgetary issue. They didn't have the money to build around the mountain. Either way, John and his men would have to go through the mountain, uh, creating what became known as the Big Bend Tunnel. Work around this time was especially slow and dangerous. Uh, there would have been cave-ins, explosions, other work accidents, along with very harmful and deadly silica dust. And these events were killing men practically every single day during the construction of the Big Bend Tunnel. But John showed up every single day, working from sunrise to sundown, swinging his 14-pound hammer, drilling as much as 10 to 12 feet per day. In some instances of the story, the hammer John Henry used was forged using the chains that had once bound him when he was in slavery. Eventually, a salesman came to the camp with a steam-powered drill that he swore could out-drill any man except for John Henry. So the scene was set. This would be the ultimate showdown between man and machine, between handwork and industrialization, between John Henry and the drilling machine. The rules were simple. There would be a 35-minute timer, and whoever could drill the deeper hole by the end of that 35 minutes would win the competition. John quickly went to work with a 20-pound hammer in each hand, pounding it two different pieces of steel while the steam drill started drilling one single hole into the stone. At the end of the 35 minutes, the machine had bored a single nine foot deep hole, but John, the steel driving man, had hammered two seven foot holes, beating the machine by five feet. The workers began to celebrate, but John quickly started fading falling to the ground unresponsive and died on the spot with a hammer in his hand. John was buried near the Big Bend Tunnel and a statue stands in his honor dedicated to his work and all the other workers that died during the construction of the Big Bend Tunnel. But how much truth is there actually behind this legend? We do know that the story of John Henry start out as a working song that helped men keep in sync and set a pace sometime uh, in the late 19th or early 20th century. We also know that several freedmen did leave the South to take part on construction jobs throughout the North after the Civil War. And we do know that work on the Big Bend Tunnel was exceedingly dangerous and hundreds of men did die during its construction. But beyond that, the lines between fact and fiction start getting very fuzzy and very, very blurred. 
In the mid-1920s, a man by the name of Guy B. Johnson working for the University of North Carolina set out to learn the truth behind the legend. He would spend four days in Talcott, West Virginia, interviewing men that worked on the Big Bend Tunnel and who could verify the account of John Henry and this famous Maine vs. Machine story. While many men said they knew of a John Henry-like individual and could verify the contest between man and machine, uh, they did say that there were some inconsistencies with the story. For example, many men claimed that John Henry did not die because of the competition, that he actually died later on uh, due to a cave-in at the tunnel. There is another account that places John Henry not at the Big Bend Tunnel, but at the Lewis Tunnel outside of Allegheny, Virginia. Dr. Scott Nelson found records of a convict named John Henry that was leased to the CNO Railroad by the Virginia Penitentiary at Richmond for the construction of the Lewis Tunnel. And the Lewis Tunnel was known for employing several steam drills during its construction. Now, because we have records of this actual convict that existed named John Henry, we do have a pretty good physical description and some pictures of him. And he doesn't really match up with the larger-than-life individual, the hulking, uh, massive individual that is usually described in the legend of John Henry. This individual was only about five foot one. Likewise, several people have their doubts that this was the real John Henry because, honestly, John Henry is actually a fairly common name. Now, Dr. Nelson was also cite that steam drills weren't super common during the construction of the Big Bend Tunnel because the softer rock in the region was much harder to drill with steam drills. West Virginia historians, on the other hand, shot back with the fact that this could have been uh, the variable that allowed John Henry to win the competition, that the softer rock made it harder for the steam drill to actually do its job, thus allowing John Henry to win the competition. Now, I'll let the historians feud it out over where the story originated and if John Henry was inspired by an actual individual because I feel if you don't let historians have little squabbles like this, they would just have very boring and pathetic jobs. Now, you might be asking yourself, but Best Virginian, you're a historian. Yeah, and I'd be the first person to tell you that I'm kind of boring and pathetic. So why has this story been told and retold so many different times? It started out as a folk story. It was then adopted into a working song. It was one of the first songs recorded to record. And since then, it has been told and retold time and time again, adapted into movies and cartoons and comic books. Why has this story persevered for so long? Mostly because there's something in this story for practically everybody. Back when the story takes place, it would have been seen as an inspirational story. It's a story of a slave that left the South and was able to provide for himself and his family with his own two hands. Later on during the time period that was known as the Southern Coal War, at a time when the life of a mule was seen as more valuable than the life of a worker, this story would have been an inspiration for those individuals who were fighting for better wages, safer working conditions, and just overall labor rights. Later on, during the Civil Rights Movement, the story of John Henry uh, would have been seen as one of an individual who wasn't afraid to knock down walls, just like how individuals were trying to knock down walls of things like segregation and Jim Crow laws. But at the end of the day, who doesn't like a good underdog story? Who doesn't like an individual who's willing to face a challenge no matter how bad the odds are stacked against them? And that is the true 
reason why I think people love the story of John Henry and why it is one of the famous folk tales in the United States and really just around the world. So I hope you learned something today. I hope you liked learning a little bit about the story of John Henry. Uh, like always, leave a like and share this video. It always helps the channel grow. Until next time, don't forget to stay wild, stay wonderful, and I'll talk to you later.